say, we always say that the most important activity in devotional service is chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And there's no question about that. That's the highest, greatest, most powerful, and most direct, and most merciful manifestation of Krishna in this age that gives the, the same benefits as direct association with Krishna, the holy name. But to get to that mercy, association of devotees is the foundation for that chanting. When we chant together, when we serve together, when we share Krishna consciousness together, then it becomes wonderful. And there's always difficulties, personality conflicts and certain things. But these are small. They're not so important. We get over them. And because we know there's a higher goal than the little disturbances that come by way of interpersonal association. And if we're humble and we're trying to serve, we're always in the best position. <laughs> if we're trying to enjoy, leg out, you're in a difficult situation when you try to enjoy because your mind's not right. You can't, you're trying to enjoy in a, in, a, in a situation that is not meant for you to try to enjoy. <laughs> but you can enjoy when you try to serve. <laughs> when, we're, when we're thinking, what can I get from this person this service, this association, this prashadam, what can I get? Then we actually minimize what we can get. We actually cut it in half. If we think, what can I give? Then we open up the doors to how much we can get. That's Krishna consciousness. So... It was something I was going to say. Oh yes, in the house of Advaita Acharya. You have him here, he's personally present. We look at it, we say, oh, it's a deity. Yeah, it is a deity, but it's the deity of Advaita Acharya. <laughs> that means he's come in his deity form. That means he's manifested himself fully to those who accept and worship him in that way. He's, he can reveal himself as his, per, his personal form. And it said that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to spend time at the house of Advaita Charya, along with all his associates, and, and they would perform Hari Kata all day, and Hari Puja all day, talking about Krishna and worshipping Krishna. That's what they would do. And at night, they would just have kirtan. <laughs> And it says that it was, that's the only thing that went on. Three things. Hari Kata, Hari Puja, Hari Kirtan. Everybody was happy. It was all about Hari. <laughs> so that was, that was the life of the Vaishnavas. And don't think Krishna consciousness is easy. It's not. The process actually is easy. The application is difficult. <laughs> what does that mean? That means that the application requires the association of devotees, guidance from the spiritual master, and purification of the heart by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Then the application, then the, then the process becomes easy. That's why Prabhupada used to say, this process is simple for the simple and complex for the complex. If we're simple-minded, simple-hearted, not simple-minded, we don't want to be simple-minded. We want simple-hearted. That means we're just, all we want is Krishna, devotional service, an association with devotees. Then it's that simple-hearted. 
if we want to enjoy this material world, then we can't say good luck because you won't have any. <laughs> There's no enjoyment there. It's, it's called, you know what an oxymoron is? You know that word, oxymoron? Huh? Huh? Oxymoron? Paradox. Yeah, very good. It's a good analogy. Something, two things that don't go together. <laughs> Material life and happiness. <laughs> they just don't go. It's just like uh, business ethics. <laughs> they don't go together. Or we might say happy marriage. <laughs> oh, that's a little bit... I use a little broader terminology there. But <laughs> two things that don't go together. It's just like, it just doesn't fit. Trying to be happy in this world is like trying to be happy in hell. <laughs> but we're not, we don't, we don't want to stay in this place. We want to use our energy time and the mercy coming from Krishna to engage in devotional service. And then eventually qualify ourselves to get out. <laughs> we want to qualify to get out. In other words, we want to purify our heart. And that comes with chanting and association with devotees. Because in the association of devotees, everything else is there. It's all there. Prabhupada used to say, if you know, or we use another example. Well, Prabhupada used to talk about the impersonalists. The impersonalists want to reach a level of spiritual realization where they merge into the body of the God. Or they want to merge into the bodily effulgence of God. And they attain what is called freedom from all material suffering. And there's a kind of happiness that you get from that when you don't have to suffer material. But there's one thing missing. You're all alone. <laughs> There's nobody else with you. And Prabhupada used the example, if I tell you, come and stay in this open field by yourself forever, you think that would be happy. You may, you may never suffer again, but at the same time, you won't experience the happiness that is your, of your nature, and that is the happiness of love which comes by relationships. So when we try to, when we engage in devotional service, we develop, we start to develop our love for Krishna. And as our love for Krishna develops, we start to love the devotees. Whereas we actually see the devotees, in that sense, as good as Krishna. Or sometimes even more, because we want to serve Krishna by serving Krishna's devotees. We know that that makes Krishna happy by serving his devotees. So that's Krishna consciousness. That's why it's simple. But then again, it takes some determination. But if you have the desire, or if you're trying to develop the desire, then it becomes easy. And Krishna guides you from there. He shows you exactly how to do it. Keep the desire. Even if you fail, failure, we sometimes in English, maybe you have the same saying in your language, failure is a pillar of success. Do you have some similar statement? You can't really achieve success unless you go through the failures. Because it's not like something is something that is really easy you might become successful the first time you do it. But that's cheap. If you just see this girl on the street and you want that girl and she comes, it's cheap. <laughs> or the boy, same thing. It's cheap. I mean, you know there's nothing there because it's cheap. But something that has value takes some effort to get it. So there's sometimes there's some failures. But that failure teaches us a lesson and also makes us, what we say, understand that this, this is not something cheap. <laughs> we, 
We've been given the greatest, what we say, opportunity to achieve the greatest treasure, love of God. And when you have love of God, there's nothing else to achieve. It's perfect. You've reached perfection. Everything else fits in automatically without you trying. So love of God can only be found in the association or developed in the association of devotees. That's why Lord Chaitanya made that such an emphasis. How much he used to serve his devotees, glorify his devotees, arrange for his devotees to be cared for. He gave, you just read the Chaitanya chart to me. It's all about Vaishnava Seva. One leela after another. How the Vaishnavas dealt with each other. And then chanting the holy names. <laughs> And of course, Prashad, <laughs> like that. That is very essential. And that's why you have devotee association, because you can get Prashad. <laughs> so, I think I'm supposed to have Prashad now. <laughs> do you all have lunch now? Or do you, yeah, did you have lunch yet? No? No lunch today. You have big feast. Big feast. Okay. That's Maha lunch. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, Prabhu. Um, you don't mind if I just tell one comment I heard from Maha Prabhu. No, go ahead. Uh, you spoke in the beginning about uh, happiness. What is the biggest uh, happiness or unhappiness? Unhappiness, yeah. Yeah. So this is from one prophet, the disciple, and uh, she was going through some hard time in her youth, and she was there, and prophet came, and she, uh, prophet said, the most fortunate thing is when you have Krishna consciousness, but when you have Krishna consciousness and you lose, if you leave Krishna consciousness, you're the most unfortunate, mm -hmm. and this really struck her. In. Yeah, that's true. Don't lose it. <laughs> Takes a lot to get it. <clears throat> We're Krishna conscious from time to time. But there's too many gaps in between. <laughs> that means we have to keep the mind focused on Krishna, on service, on, on activities that bring about Krishna's awareness. Why do we go to holy places? Because we get purified and when we come back to our respective areas, we take the, the mood of the holy places with us and then we try to keep that consciousness even though we're wherever we are. We try to practice that consciousness wherever we are. So a holy place is a place where devotional service is the exclusive feature. Here you have it. Temple is simply focusing on how to serve Panchatattva and how to arrange for the devotees to get what they need so they can serve nicely. That's a holy place. <laughs> we wrote this book or put this book together called Holy Jail. <laughs> how many jails are holy? <laughs> Seems Sounds like an oxymoron too. Holy jail, but that means someone inside of a prison has become fixed in their devotional service and they've transformed the prison into a place of devotion. So that there's some elements of holiness there, some elements of devotion. Because Krishna consciousness is transcendental. Yeah, so if you lose Krishna consciousness, you lose everything. Sometimes we say, and rightly so, if you lose your money, you lose nothing. If you lose your health, you lose something. You'll spend money to get your health, right? So you can see health is more better and more valuable than wealth. Because people will spend large amounts of money to regain health or to keep health. 
So health is more important than money. And But they say if you lose your character, you lose your virtues, you lose your values, you lose everything. <laughs> because that's what makes up you. You're known by your virtues, your character, like that. So when you're Krishna conscious, then that's your character. <laughs> Anything else? Everyone seems so serious. I, I, is this a... You're doing a, a silent vigil here? <laughs> no? Not a silent vigil? No. Okay. Yes? Some things do come easy. Then you should appreciate that and just use it for Krishna's service. But Krishna consciousness doesn't come easy. It doesn't. If, if it does come easy, that means you've worked for it many lifetimes before. <laughs> it's not like that. Makes, that means in many previous lives you sacrifice so much. And if it comes easy in this life, that means there's something there in previous lives. But it's not an easy thing. It's not a cheap thing. Even things, there's even things in this world that are very difficult to get, what to speak about. You know, love of God, which can't be bought by any money. Or any anything. <laughs> so yeah. But if you something comes by a way of its own accord, or just by providence or whatever, appreciate it and use it for Krishna's service. <laughs> then it then it'll grow. It becomes greater. We see people who who are big businessmen. I've seen many of these examples. They come to Krishna conscious and they give their money to Krishna and their businesses just increase more and more. Because Krishna says, oh, you're using your money to serve me? Okay, here's some more. <laughs> Krishna controls everything. <laughs> everything at all times, all places. He is the complete and absolute controller. He can make anything happen, and he can stop anything from happening. <laughs> it's not a bad, it's not so bad. I mean, I heard worse ones than that. <laughs> Some like people screaming, <laughs> babies crying. That's not so bad. So yeah, but Krishna can do anything. He, he will. For his devotees, for the materialists, he works through the material energy. For the devotees, he works through the spiritual energy. It's different. The materialists are getting their karma. Devotees are getting... A combination of their previous karma along with Krishna's mercy. But that karma will sooner or, later, sooner or later be gone. And then at one time it's simply Krishna's mercy. Krishna, if you just think... Krishna always tells you exactly what you should do at every time in every situation. If you stop and think. Because he's there in the heart. In fact, he's always telling us, always guiding us how to act, when not to act, what to do. He's always telling us. But we have to be somewhat able to hear him. Yes, what's your name? 
Luca, hi Krishna. He's always speaking. <laughs> Which voice is Paramatma? Yeah, sometimes there's ten voices, now four. If it's a loud voice, it's not Paramatma. <laughs> Enjoy this. <laughs> That's not Paramatma. The sweet, soft voice is Krishna. And usually, the most... Usually it's that voice that comes by way of understanding that, that you have experienced through Shastra and through what you've heard in lectures and what you read in books like that. We can't always hear. It says in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains that when the mind is completely called, controlled, then the super soul is reached. Only when the mind is completely controlled, then you can reach super soul. Then, what are the symptoms? You don't see dualities anymore. Dualities are material. So, but in in the meantime, we need to take direction from. Now, in the day to day life in this world, we use our intelligence how to do things. But the mood is how to serve. If you're in that mood, you always do the right thing. Even if it doesn't come out right, you're still right because you're in the right mood. <laughs> how to serve. So hearing Krishna's voice is not easy. <laughs> it's not. But it's the, usually the sweet, soft voice that's encouraging us through our intelligence. <clears throat> and Maya's screaming at us, Hey! <laughs> what are you doing wasting so much time in the temple? <laughs> Take care of the family. Make money. Watch TV. <laughs> you, you, some people say, yeah, that's Krishna. He's telling me to relax a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not Krishna. Yes. Hmm. Question: Can someone repeat it? You sound like super soul. Your voice is so sweet and soft. Acha. Ill. Well, we know that taking care of health is very important. So, yeah. Prabhupada would say, now don't misunderstand this. He would say, health, sadhana, service. In that order. Health is first, your sadhana is second, service. But that doesn't mean you take care of your health and you don't do sadhana service. <laughs> means there's the the priorities are you do all three but you keep health very much as a priority so when you do get sick or if you do feel like you need to do slow down a little then you do that why not because your health for the sake of health but health for the sake of service because Prabhupada wrote, wrote one statement, keep good health, work hard for Krishna. That's our motto. <laughs> That's the exact statement. Keep good health, work hard for Krishna. That's our motto. Motto? You know the word motto? Yeah. 
means that's our slogan. Our means that's our way. So we want to work hard for Krishna, but we should keep good health. You can't work hard if you if you're not keeping good health. I got sick a few days ago. I took extra rest. I cut down on a lot of other things, and I did it in one day because I got sick and I was out of it, pretty much out of it. And I just one day I just focused on the health, and the next day I was okay. So sometimes you have to do that. <laughs> That's practical. <laughs> but not that you get healthy and then you go out, you know, riding your bike and skiing and, and watching, oh, I'm healthy again. <laughs> no, you want to serve Krishna with the good health. That's the, that's the key. So yeah, health is important, very important. Every letter Prabhupada wrote, when he signed it, he would always sign, hope this meets you in the best of health, your ever well-wisher A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. That's how he signed all his letters. He always said that. He always was concerned about the devotee's health. To keep good health. Because you can't really do much. You can still chant, and you can still read. But when, you, when you're not healthy, then you're a liability to everybody else. You know? Then somebody else has to take care of you. <laughs> or, you know, you're just, you're not happy. And you're, so you need to keep good health, work hard, <laughs> chant hard, <laughs> serve nicely. Okay, 2.15, I have to take prashadam and then I have to meet somebody and then I have to be here at 3.40. I still have to go to the apartment and unpack because I think they're working on the rooms. And then the guest room is being refurbished, right? Thank you. Chila Prabhupada ki jai. Panchatattva ki jai. Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo.